this episode on Sailing for Power. After the perfect night sail, the quest for the three kilo crab continues. Whoa! I got the tongs to get him out of the esky and I didn't realize, but far out. Um, this is the laziest crab recipe that, that I ever do. So we've just had a lovely day at White's Bay and we were just about to head off south. Try to crank up this engine and nothing. Kind of winning. What is it? The power that joins the battery to the starter motor. The cable was cooked. I don't have a spare that size. So I just had to cut the dirty wire back, split it, put a bigger washer, clamp it with a spring washer. And then just replace it. That wind's hard too. Full moon. I'm excited for this sail. Should be pretty nice, hopefully. So we haven't filmed much tonight. It's been a pretty nice sail. We've had uh, about 10 to 15 knots all night, uh, right on the nose. So um, just had it at about uh, 90 degrees to wind angle. And flying along about seven to eight knots. And I just received a message from my friend Jen. G'day Jen. She is on this boat just behind us, which I've had my eye on since we left the Percy's. Pretty cool when you see your friends on AIS. And she's doing a boat delivery. They're actually taking that one all the way to New Zealand. It's a big tug boat, I think. So we'll probably report back in at sunrise, which is about two hours away. This was our first good night sail and it was absolutely heavenly. We had calm seas and just enough wind right on the nose that kept us at a constant and comfortable speed all night. Add in a couple of knots from the current and this is pretty much as good as it gets. That is the moon, believe it or not. <laughs> You're crazy. This one's just coming up. The wind has completely dropped out to just under 10 knots, but still making three knots at this stage, but I think the tide's about to turn and we're going to be on Struggle Street, so we might have to nip into Port Clinton for the night, for the day, see what happens when Mac wakes up. So we left uh, White's Bay at the Percy's just uh, last night about eight o'clock, had a great sail, almost a little bit too fast. We were just spilling the main and the, the heady, trying to slow down a bit, doing about eight knots. And then this morning as we were rounding uh, Island Head Creek, which was, was gonna be our stopping point, the uh, wind dropped out. So we pulled into Port Clinton and we were gonna leave at midday, but we decided to stay at the night. We were a bit tired and Jesse's talking in tongues still. So uh yeah definitely a good spot to do some crabbing so i thought oh, i'll go get some bait can't be that hard to find something but the problem is not catching a fish it's landing it i've lost three lures in three casts so i've brought out the heavy artillery some wire and uh we'll see if we can get some bait for the crab pots Took me all the five minutes to lose three lures uh, straight away, so I just set up some wire and this old uh, chestnut, and let's see how we go. Very promising, but ran aground like five times. 
heaps of big swirls on the surface, crap in my pants. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the most stress-free crabbing, but I don't know, maybe I should have just gone to the spot where I know I got them last time. But see how we go, fingers crossed, hopefully they, nobody raids my pots. in the middle of the boat. <laughs> There's so many big swirls and shit Crap country. Today. Yeah, I got some uh, bait, more bait up the front here. I was here by myself <laughs> yesterday and I was just, I was getting stuck running aground. The phone, the satellite map ran out and I just kept getting like big swooshes behind the boat. Could have been turtles or dugongs, but I was just cracking my pants the whole time. Mm. Yeah, How's the current? So the tires at the moment are what, four meters? Yeah, so all of this goes underwater. We must be about mid tide, are we? I feel like croc bait sitting on the side of the boat, it's not sitting in the middle. Bunch of little crabs, we just pulled up half a tree to get this pot. There's nothing in it. Heavy, got it from a branch still. Go back a bit. Oh, oh, he looks soft. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a bloody mission. Absolute mission, but that is a good crab. God, all is lost. Big rusty buck. Nice one. Not bad, only cost us fifteen dollars. Cost us a pot. Multiple and a lot other of stress deaths. and arguments. Oh he's rock solid. Nice. Nice one. Oh. Use the paddle if you want. Oh. <laughs> Your game. Yeah. how confident you were. Look at all the string you've got. <laughs> Fruit cut. <laughs> oh, you've got to be prepared. Oh yeah, nice crab. Yeah, well, it's about eight nautical miles each way. So it's going to be a tasty crab, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, solid rusty buck. So we'll end up doing about 30 nautical miles for this crab. But anyway, what else are we going to use the fuel for? Can't eat it. There you go. Big old crab, that thing. The question is, how are you going to eat it? We can have a fire, we can have crab no. pizza. Oh, oh. Is that a big chunk? You just took out the fire. That's, like, that's your finger. If you were my crab, I'd punish you. 
If I was your crab, I'd punish myself. You always end up with so much footage because you've got to film each tying up. Just in case Michael gets bitten. Got to get it for the tube. <laughs> Bring it in, Bring it in. flying fish on the deck. Still good. Yeah, just dry it out and eat it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I seem to hype on it. After one of our fastest crab sessions ever, we grabbed the afternoon tide south and smashed out the next leg to Great Keppel Island. So we left uh, Port Clinton this morning, beautiful spot, especially uh, compared to the last time with the uh, crazy sow we were getting on the way up, but on the way down the northerly, the anchorage is beautiful, uh, a bit further to go crabbing, ended up doing 34 nautical miles to catch one crab, but we got one, and uh, he's doing alright. I did a welfare check before, but my uh, crab tying skills are leave a little bit to be desired. So, He's still in here. Oh, still feisty. So, uh, yeah, that's good. He's healthy. He's going to be dinner tonight, I think. Um, yeah, so we're nearly at the Kepos. We've been going for about just under six hours, and uh, we're flying along now. 16 knots on the beam. We're doing seven to eight knots now. It's pretty good. And, um, yeah, can't complain. Looking forward to uh, dropping anchor and chilling at the Keppels for a few days. We've got a, a uh, couple of treasure hunts to do. Oh, that's a disappointment. Big beef diving lure that Brett Horner gave us when we bought the boat has not produced a fish. And when it finally did, snapped the cable. So, it's a big lure, so what, whatever it was would have been decent. Cheers anyway, Brett. Sorry we couldn't show you uh, something, some monster on the end of this meat line that we made. of only drawing 800 mils. We could have gone closer too if we wanted. Yeah, there's a, there's a sandbar just where that boat is. Is there? Yeah. Just there? Yeah. Ooh. So, I don't think anyone will be squeezing in front of us this time, but uh, you never know. It's always, uh, this is when our boat really pays for itself, is being able to squeeze right in here. We've got some strong winds over the next few days. We are going to be very, very comfortable looking at a palm tree beach waterfront. And good internet, Michael! <laughs> we can get stuff done finally. Barbecuing something delicious on the beach. I can smell it. <laughs> it smells like Asia, like walking around Thailand or Indo or something. The crab untied himself, and uh, I want to. The crab untied himself, or oh, your crab tying skills. It, he's like missing crab. a swimmer, so it's hard to tie it up properly. So uh, I uh, want to put him out of his misery and put him in the fridge to go to sleep. 
so I have to retime to do that. So I got the tongs to get him out of the esky, and I didn't realise, but <laughs> far out. Can you imagine? Are you a little digit? He's Did coming it? for you, quick! He's not Jeez. happy at all. Oh, I'm scared for you. Look at that. Better you than me, though. <laughs> so angry. That's a meaty claw. That one like needs to go on the inside always. He made contact. Oh. You trying to kill me? That was a good one. We're probably going to get a copyright infringement with that yeah, music coming from the boat that. in the background. What's happening? Oh, just about to eat this for dinner. Beautiful. Look at this gnarly old crab here. Proper rusty buck, like you're not going to fit any more meat in there. This rusty colour just tells you that they're like really old shell and a uh, little mating mark on there that people have told us that the cross means it's made it already. And uh, yeah. How are you going to cook it? I'm just going to do like a simple pepper crab, I think. Pepper um, crab? Yeah, salt and pepper crab. Just real simple. Put it in a pan, salt, pepper. <laughs> Wow, I can't and wait. Put the lid on. It was, we've had it before, <laughs> heaps of times. Yeah, I didn't ever rate it. Okay, so I've broken up that crab that you saw before and uh, just taken the claws off, pre smashed them a little bit to let the flavour get in there, cut the uh, body parts into a couple pieces. Yeah, really simple. Um, this is the laziest crab recipe that, that I ever do and uh, it's good because it's every other one's a mission. But, uh, so I'm going to put a bit of this chicken stock powder over it, a bit of salt, a bit of black pepper, and just a bit of corn flour so it all just kind of coats the crab. And then I'm just going to put it in a little pot here with a little bit of heated up peanut oil and I'll just put the lid on it and just stir it around and it'll cook and steam and it'll be delicious, hopefully. Anyway, a bit of that. Salt. What was that? That was the um, that chicken, was powder. chicken powder. Yeah. Hot gar. Hot gar. Chicken crack. Chicken crack, indeed. Stop crack. Salt. Oh, oh. Is that like a two tablespoons of salt? Uh, tablespoon of stock. Tablespoon of salt. Tablespoon of stock. Something like that, more or less. We're just kind of winging it. Don't want it to be too salty, too stocky. Definitely heaps of pepper. And black pepper, son. Stir it around like that. Simple, simple. And then a bit of corn flour just to like glug it all up and bind it together. So simple. I think, anyway, we'll just see. Put that all in, mix it around. And then just put it in the pan. Put the lid on, cook it for about. 10-15 minutes, little the crabs cook through and then just dig in. So I just put a little bit of Chinese rice wine in there just to deglaze the pan a bit. And uh, yeah, it's been going for about, what, eight minutes it's all now? steamy. Looking good. Smells good. Cooked. What did you just say to me, <laughs> Michael? Nothing, I said enjoy this delicious meal I just cooked. He said, hopefully this meal doesn't taste like poop. <laughs> Filling with confidence here. To be reviewed. Don't cook this yet, folks. <laughs> Crab just didn't look as full as uh, expected from a rusty bar. Expected. I don't know, maybe he was too rusty. Mm. Alright, there it is. So here we go. It's fine. It's yummy. Jesse reckons it tastes pooey. Join us next episode as we explore the reef around the Keppels and go on a treasure hunt. So we've got two things of treasure buried here at the Keppels for us. It's Balmain barks, prawns, scallops. Give them the 20 bucks. Nah, don't worry about it. Merry Christmas.
<laughs> We're super excited to announce that we finally have Papel merch. Finally found something that we're happy to get out to you guys. We've got tees, jumpers and singlets. Shirts, tees, tops. Shirts, tees and tops. We're buying some merch is a great way to support the channel. Yeah, we really appreciate the support. Special thanks to our patrons out there that have really gone above and beyond and supported us on the next level. Um, really appreciate it and uh, hopefully see you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks, guys. A huge thanks to our patrons for your ongoing support and welcome on board Kent, Paul, Daz and Bill. Cheers everyone.